Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing weight distribution and how it affects vehicle dynamics uh, and more specifically getting into kind of why certain weight distributions are considered to be ideal such as 50-50 and whether or not that's actually the case. Uh, and in order to understand this it's probably important that you understand slip angles, understeer, and oversteer. So if you aren't familiar with these you may want to check out the video description. I have relevant links uh, and so you can better understand this video. Now, looking at the equation for the front slip angle of the car and the rear slip angle of the car, you can see it's the weight on the front axle divided by the cornering stiffness. Now, the cornering stiffness is a property of the tire and it comes down to many factors, tire size, compound, width, uh, tread, load, inflation, pressure, wear, and a bunch of other factors. Uh, but basically, it's just a factor that has to do with the properties of the tire uh, multiplied by the speed of the car squared divided by gravity times the radius about which the car is turning. Now this is the same equation for the front and rear uh, in order to calculate the slip angles. And of course, if the front slip angle is larger than the rear slip angle, the car is understeering. If the opposite is happening, the rear is larger than the rear, uh, you're going to have a oversteering vehicle. So everything equal uh, with a car going around a corner, then the characteristics of whether it will understeer or oversteer is purely dependent upon its weight distribution and the loading. So uh, this is important because this is where this 50-50 ideal weight distribution comes from uh, because if you have half of the weight on the front and half of the weight on the rear, while you're going around a corner uh, at a constant speed, at a constant radius, you're going to have a neutrally steering car because the slip angles will be the same. And so that's kind of the whole reason why this thing has been considered to be ideal, even though it might necessarily uh, not be ideal and plenty of cars out there do not use a 50-50 weight distribution because there are benefits of moving that center of gravity back. Now, if you look at uh, basically a car here, so we've got the center of gravity in the center, here's the front tire, uh, the rear tire, if you move that center of gravity forward, all else being equal, the car is going to tend to understeer. If you move that center of gravity forward, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to be transferring more of the loading to the front tire under braking. Uh, and so this is going to mean the front wheel, uh, the front two tires are going to be doing the vast majority of the braking. Now, if you do have a front wheel drive car and you move that center of gravity forward, then you're going to be providing more acceleration traction for those front tires because you've got more weight over it. So the limit will be higher at which you can accelerate the maximum force you can accelerate with. Now, as I was mentioning, often the CG is not at 50 50. It's more like 45 55 or 40 60, something like that, where the CG moved back a bit. And this is done uh, for several reasons, but all else being equal, it would create a car that would tend to oversteer. However, it does have other benefits. Uh, one thing, if you move that CG back, that means your front and rear tires are going to be doing more evenly loading uh, during the braking. So because you don't have as much load transfer to the front wheels under braking, those rear brakes can actually do a good amount of work. Uh, so that's a great benefit of having your CG back a little bit. You also will obviously have more traction uh, if you have a rear wheel drive vehicle where you've got that weight over the rear tires. So why is 50-50 always, you know, claimed to be the ideal weight distribution? Well, like I was saying, at a constant speed, going around a constant radius corner, a car will steer neutrally. It won't understeer or oversteer, uh, so it will behave very predictably. Um, and this is kind of leaving out the other thing where, you know, you want weight centrally located so your car has a lower moment of inertia, but we're just purely talking about, uh, in this case, understeer and oversteer, and you can uh, mitigate that basically with how you place your center of gravity. All comes down to these equations, uh, which I have derived in another video, also included in the video description. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.